how's the preparation? Quite difficult because we've actually got um, European qualifiers in between. So I think that the main thing is um, all the players that have been approached have nobody's pulled out. So that's a good start. I think uh, logistically we're working a lot on that with the BOA and, and local, which is is very different. We don't own the. The, the event, so that that's quite challenging. You say all the players have been contacted. How how evenly split is it amongst the four nations? Would you say? Um, very even at this moment in time. I think uh, the challenge will be um, uh, uh, when it comes down to final selection. Obviously, it, you, you players have to be fit and healthy, and it will be about those players that are performing. So um, that's going to be the challenge because I'm sure everybody wants to play. Um, and why wouldn't they? It's an Olympic Games. Have you been in contact much with the other national managers to talk I've about players? To, I've spoken to all of them. The women's GB team, they actually kick off the, the tournament on the 25th of July. I mean, that's an exciting prospect in itself. It is, actually. I think when you put it like that, obviously it starts earlier than the, the sort of the main athletics, but we are the first event. So we, we've got to really take that opportunity to um, raise the profile of the women's game and, and generally the whole Olympics. It, to leave a, a fantastic legacy for women's football in this country. And it's another opportunity, as it always is, you, you find with you trying to push the women's game in yeah. this country. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have certain objectives. Obviously, the, the football for me is the main, um, but around it, 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 it's about the legacy. It's about increasing participation, increasing awareness and, and just really galvanising support for the women's game in, in, in general in, in this country. Um, and if we can do that and get some real positives as a result of, of being in the Olympics, that would be fantastic. Ultimately, there's only so much yourself and the team and the players can do to, to raise a profile and you need a bit of help from the media, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we you know, days like this, we've, we've had a big media turnout today. Um, really puts us in the public eye, puts us in the in the domain, um, you know, puts us on the forefront of, of, of what's going on with the Olympics. So a real opportunity. We, we need the media's buy-in. It really helps raise our profile. And I was reading reports, obviously you were frustrated personal, on a personal level about the things like the sports personality of the year, which just go to show the, the lack of interest yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. I get frustrated a lot about... Um, <laughs> You know, sometimes, you know, every morning I watch the sports section on, on the news and, and very little attention is paid to women's sport in this country. It's not just football, I think it's women's sport. It, it, it's very frustrating because we have some really successful um, female athletes, you know, and I just don't think we get the recognition we deserve. The whole Team GB football, it's, there's been a bit of a battle since it was kind of talked about yeah. a while ago, and then comments by other athletes like Di Green who says that football doesn't have a place in the Olympics. Is it, does it make it even harder for you to, to win people over? It's interesting because if, if you talk, talk um, to the Americans, the female footballers, in America, that is the pinnacle. It isn't the World Cup. The Olympics is bigger than the World Cup for them. Um, for me, it's about another major tournament. It's an Olympics. It's a world stage. Great opportunity. Why wouldn't you want to be part of something great?